Hello, this is Spellbinder with this news report from the European Union Times, the EU Times online newspaper. The uh, source for this story that they've got this from is questionable. It's from whatdoesitmean.com, which is Socha Far, Fall, F-A-A-L, which is actually a dude that runs that site. It's not really a woman, and it's almost like inquire information. But I'll go ahead and post this just for S and G's, and uh, let you decide if this is real or if this isn't. But it sounds pretty good, though. It sounds like something Obama would do if he had a chance. And uh, I'll go ahead and let the uh, voice simulator read the article. I'll just follow along with it. But this is pretty interesting. This is <laughs> I went down to the bottom of the article and said source and I just kind of ripped my mouse over it and the source was what does it mean dot com, which is uh like I said, an inquire you can take it as a grain of salt, basically. It's it sounds good but it's being the source of what it is, it's probably not true. But just in case, it will be on file as a uh, report, just in case something like this does come out. Because it was talking about natural disasters, poisonous gas clouds hitting the earth, causing the birds to drop. It's got several things in there, talking about earthquake generation devices to create a disaster. As they said, you know, it is documented. They even said we'll create a disaster, real or imaginary, to bring the United States under a tyranny and under a police state. But just uh, take it as a grain of salt. This is it. I'll let it read the article and I'll sit back and go along with it as far as the uh, cursor. This podcast is brought to you by Odiogo.com. Top U.S. federal judge assassinated after threat to Obama agenda. A Foreign Intelligence Service SVR report circulating in the Kremlin today states that the top U.S. federal judge for the state of Arizona was assassinated barely 72 hours after he made a critical ruling against the Obama administration's plan to begin the confiscation of their citizens' private retirement and banking accounts in order to stave off their nation's imminent economic collapse, and after having the U.S. Marshals protecting him removed. According to this SVR report, Federal Judge John McCarthy Rowe was the chief judge for the United States District Court for the District of Arizona who this past Friday issued what is called a preliminary ruling in a case titled United States of America v. $333,520 in United States currency at L case number 4-2010 CV00703 filed November 30, 2010 wherein he stated he was preparing to rule against Obama's power to seize American citizens' money without clear and convincing evidence of a crime being committed. The case being ruled on by Judge Roll, this report continues, was about bulk cash smuggling into or out of the United States that the Obama administration claimed was their right to seize under what are called presidential executive orders, instead of using existing laws. The Obama administration used as support for their claim before Judge Roll, the SVR says, the seizing of all American citizens' gold, in 1933, by President Franklin D. Roosevelt's signing of Executive Order 6102, which was ruled at the time to be constitutional. Should the Obama administration win their argument to seize their citizens' money by executive order without having to abide by the law was made more chilling this past week when reports emerged from the U.S. stating that President Obama and his regime allies were, indeed, preparing to rule America by decree since their loss this past November of their control over the U.S. House of Representatives, and in the words of the Washington Post's columnist Charles Krauthammer, for an Obama bureaucrat the will of the Congress is a mere speed bump. Since taking office in early 2009, Obama has completely overturned the once free United States through his use of executive orders that asserts his power to put anyone he wants in prison without charges or trial forever and his right to assassinate any American citizen he deems a threat. 
the most chilling of these powers Obama has asserted for himself, however, are contained in Executive Order 13528 he signed nearly a year ago January 10, 2010, creating a council of governors he has handpicked to rule over the United States in place of its elected representatives when their next disaster strikes and orders them to begin synchronization and integration of state and federal military activities in the United States. In other matters of mutual interest pertaining to National Guard, Homeland Defense, and civil support activities, Going from the chilling to the outright scary, about whatever disaster the American regime is preparing their people for, is Obama's Homeland Security Department, through their Ready.gov organization, beginning to air this past week a public service television commercial titled World Upside Down that shows a typical family sitting in their home suddenly losing all of its gravity and warning all who watch it to begin preparing. Note, in our previous reports U.S. descent into total police state American Samoa, 2012, Solar chaos fears grow, poles shift blamed for Russian air disaster, closure of U.S. airport and poisonous space clouds slamming into Earth cause mass bird and fish deaths we had detailed some of fears the U.S. government are most worried about, but which they still will not be truthful to their citizens about. Interesting to note about the assassination of Judge Roll is that it is being blamed on a lone gunman said to be mentally unstable aren't they all said directed at a U.S. congresswoman named Gabrielle Giffords who survived this mass killing, and that killed at least five other innocent people, including a nine-year-old girl named Christina Taylor Green curiously born on September 11, 2001 9-11. Equally interesting to note about the assassin, a 22-year-old man named Jared Launer, is that he is being described by the propaganda media organs in the U.S. as an anti-government type individual who prior to this mass killing is said to have left crazed rantings on the internet, but whose handler, described as a white male between 40-50 years old with dark hair, is still being sought after. The circumstances surrounding Judge Roll's assassination by Launer, also, mirror those of Farouk Abdul Mutalab Aka the underwear bomber who used cash to buy a one-way ticket to the United States at the last minute while carrying no luggage and being on a terrorist watch list. Incredibly, his father had communicated to the U.S. Embassy in Nigeria in November that Abdul Mutalab had been radicalized and may be planning a terrorist attack. At least one witness, passenger Kurt Haskell, claimed that a well-dressed Indian man had escorted Abdul Mutalab to the ticket counter and told the ticket agent that Abdul Mutalab didn't have a passport but needed to get on the plane. To if this Launer is able to join the long list of CIA U.S. military mind-controlled assassins there appears to be no doubt as his actions, past, present and future, shows his fitting the profile of these maniacs as detailed in the massive lawsuit currently wending its way through the U.S. federal court system United States District Court Northern District of California, San Francisco Division Case, CV09-0037 filed against the U.S. government by hundreds of veterans, and as we can read as reported by the Raw Story News Service. It's well known that the CIA began testing substances like LSD on soldiers beginning in the 1950s but less is known about allegations that the agency implanted electrodes in subjects. A 2009 lawsuit claimed that the CIA intended to design and test septal electrodes that would enable them to control human behavior. The lawsuit said that because the government never disclosed the risks, the subjects were not able to give informed consent. To if the American people will ever be told the truth about Launer and his assassination of Judge Roll there seems little doubt as the Obama regime is fighting with everything it has to keep the information on these mind-controlled assassins secret, and as we can read as reported by the Courthouse News Service, the Central Intelligence Agency in January 2011 will argue for dismissal of Vietnam veterans claims that the CIA must provide them with information about the health effects of chemicals used on them during Cold War era human experiments. The CIA also claims it is not obligated to provide the veterans with medical care for side effects of the drugs. It's the CIA's third attempt to get the case dismissed. In a 2009 federal lawsuit, Vietnam veterans of America claimed that the Army and CIA had used at least 7,800 soldiers as guinea pigs in Project Paperclip. They were given at least 250 and as many as 400 types of drugs, among them sarin, one of the most deadly drugs known to man, amphetamines, barbiturates, mustard gas, phosgene gas and LSD. 
Among the project's goals were to control human behavior, develop drugs that would cause confusion, promote weakness or temporarily cause loss of hearing or vision, create a drug to induce hypnosis and identify drugs that could enhance a person's ability to withstand torture. The veterans say that some of the soldiers died, and others suffered grand mal seizures, epileptic seizures and paranoia. The veterans say the CIA promised in the 1970s to compensate those who were made guinea pigs, but the 2009 complaint states that the government never made a sincere effort to locate the survivors. In its 32-page motion to dismiss the group's third amended complaint, the CIA claims it has no legal obligation under the Administrative Procedures Act to provide the veterans with notice of the drug's health effects and that the veterans' notice claim rests solely on state common law duty. The CIA claims that the law on which the veterans base their claim for health care compensation stems from the Department of Defense and Army regulations, which do not purport to have a binding effect on the CIA. And it claims that the Defense Department never intended nor committed to providing medical care for service member participants in the test programs. Based upon the CIA's assertion that the U.S. Defense Department never intended nor committed to providing medical care for service member participants in the test programs clearly shows their knowing of the existence of these mind control assassins, like Launer, leading one to wonder how many more of them are out there, and even worse, when they will strike next. One can only hope that there is some power in America today able to stop the madness currently taking over that once great nation before all is truly lost. We hope it is much sooner than later for all of the world's sake. Source related posts. And that's the article. And what I'll do is I'll post this. I'll have the link to this article. And I'll also put the link of the uh, source, which is uh, whatdoesitmean.com. Like I said, it's a guy that writes that, that website. And it claims to be some lady named Sosha Faller. F A A L and uh, it's it's almost inquire material. Some of it's true, some of it's false. A lot of this has truth in it, but there's you know you just can't trust it. Everything in red is uh, a link. So when you bring this article up on your website, you'll be able to uh, go to each one of these in red and and see what they're talking about for sure. So this is Spellbinder reporting. A possible hoax story on what's going to happen shortly, sometime this year, with the Obama administration. And you know, a lot of it is, I wouldn't put it past him, using executive orders to get his way, since they all lost in November and uh, all the rest of it. But until next time, this is Spellbinder saying, be good, be good at it, and check this out and see what you think. Leave comments going, what the hell? <laughs> WTF even. Alrighty. Good day.